Hey guys, and welcome to this new tutorial I have here on how I made these 3D Mario levels in a new video that we that came out last week, Super Mario Logic in Real Life. So before we start, let's take a look at some of the shots from that video that use this technique that I'll be talking about in this tutorial. Alright, so for this specific tutorial, I'm going to go over how I made the underground level, specifically this shot here when Joe comes out of the pipe. I like I like to um, go over the underground level because it has a lot of different elements in it, a little more than the overground ones do, especially with the color and everything. So let's get into it right now. So first off, you can see here that we have a bunch of different 3D elements that are in this scene like the blocks here the pipe up there some more blocks and then we have a floor and also behind it we have kind of a cave like picture there and also we have of course joe here before i go into that i'm just going to talk about real quick how this was done it's um joe keyed out in front of a green screen and after that we just keyed it out the green shrunk him down a little bit, rotated him, and then animated him to come out of the pipe above him using keyframes. So with all that aside, let's go into doing the actual 3D effects. What I used to make these 3D effects was the new uh, plugin from Video Copilot called Element 3D. It's actually a very powerful plugin for After Effects, and it's actually a lot easier to use than a lot of the big name. 3D software out there, such as, you know, 3DS Max, Cinema 4D, and Maya, and all of them. So now, let's begin to add some of these 3D models into our scene. So, first off, we're going to add a regular solid, and put the Element Video Copilot plugin on there as an effect. Go into the scene setup. And now, we're going to start off with the floor of our level. So how I did the floor was maybe not the best way, but the way that worked for me. I found the cube per the cube model under the primitives and what I did was I textured the cube here with a stone texture that I found off of the internet. So I dragged that into the diffuse here and what that does is it just makes the whole entire cube here now have that texture of the stone. So bring it back into our scene, we'll position it down here. We're going to have to rotate it a little bit so we can actually see the floor here. And now what I did was I stretched out the cube here a lot to extend it so it makes, looks, makes it look like the floor is going on like forever throughout the rest of the level and really it's just not that long at all it's long enough just to fit the frame here and once you have the floor in here you're gonna probably want to go back into the uh, the element settings and try to fiddle with things a little bit to get the look that you want for the sake of time here I'm just gonna copy and paste the one I had from the last composition that one that was actually in the video so I'm just gonna put that in there so now let's add in a few blocks all right, so I'm gonna add another solid, put the element effect on there, scene setup, and this is this is an easy this is an easy one. All we have to do is go into our primitives, grab that cube again, and we have to texture this one with the question block here, which I happen to have. With that, we see the texture of the actual. Mario block is now on this cube so let's put it into our scene and we're gonna have to make it a little smaller obviously rotate it a little bit to look a little, bit, a little more realistic on the scene the more sides you can see the more realistic it probably will be scale it down a little bit move it over to where we want it to be and how we want it to look so it's looking pretty good so far with the floor and the block and everything and then what you do after it's all set and done where you want it you go into the settings go into color correction color it the way that you want your scene to look but for the sake of time again i'm just gonna copy and paste the one i had before over so now 
let's go into adding some more blocks here. And so this one's an easy one to do. All you have to do is duplicate the block that we had before and go in and change the texture that was on it. So we have the same block here. I'm going to go and retexture it with a different one. I'm going to texture it with the brick block look from the Mario blocks. And you see that now that we put it on, it looks like this now, like the brick blocks from the game. So now that is in our scene. We can position it next to the other block. We can put it behind and move it over to this side, this side, where it looks like it's actually floating next to it. So that looks pretty good. Why don't we add one more of these blocks here by duplicating it and just bringing it over to the other side. And that should be good. Now the next thing we're going to want to do in this scene is to add some shadows for the blocks to make it look like they're actually floating on top of the floor that we had here. If you look back in the actual composition from the video, we can see we have a shadow here of the floating blocks. So how we do that is we go into our solids make it a black solid and put it in and we're going to make a mask on it an elliptical mask just a big circle um, just scale it down a little bit to around this size and what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to rotate it on the x-axis what we're going to need to do is going to drag it down to under the blocks here, and then we have to rotate a little bit on the x-axis to make it look a little more realistic. So that means we need to make it a 3D object, go into our settings, and then just bump up the x-rotation a little bit to right about there should be good. And then from here we need to make it look a little more shadowy like, which means we add some feathering onto the mask. And the feathering makes the black spread out a little bit, look a little more realistic, more like a regular shadow, a little softer. And yeah, it looks pretty good right now the way it is. So let's position it right under the blocks here. Alright, so now we're going to add the pipe into the scene. And what I'm actually going to do for time's sake, I'm just going to copy over the pi pipe that we had for the other one, but I'm going to show you... Um, in depth what the pipe actually looks like when it's in element 3d So if we go into the scene setup, we can actually look into element 3d here and see that we have the pipe right here and It looks so small a little off center because it was part of a big Mario props like 3d model Pack and I just deleted all the rest of them just leaving the pipe and what I did was, for texturing, I just added the paint preset on there. And then after the paint preset was on there, I made the diffuse color green, like the pipe. So that made it look like how the pipe looks in the actual game. So moving forward, I added a couple more blocks up in the corner. So now we have to add the background to the scene. The reason we're making a background to it is to make it look a little more real, a little more realistic and such. So I chose a sort of cave-like background here. And you, you notice when we put it on here, it looks really gold and not exactly what we like. We're gonna have to alter co the color a lot to make it look like how we want it. As you see here in the other one, it looks like it blends in with the rest of the scene. So when I'm color correcting the actual background, I'm not going to make it exactly how it looks here in this other one because we actually have a universal color correction that we're going to add a little bit later. All I'm going to do is kind of make it a little more grayed out and less saturated like we have here. So we bumped down the saturation a little bit, mess with the curves to take away the redness and it's looking pretty good like it would work. So lastly, what we're going to do for our scene is we're going to add some universal color correction to it to make it look like a dark and kind of cave underground like level like they do in the games. So I'm going to copy and paste the 
universal color correction I had for the actual composition, I'm going to show you what exactly was done in it. So with the color correction in, what basically all it did was with the curves we made it look a little more blue, give it more of a blue tint feel to it. You can actually even add a tint effect to it and we messed with the brightness and contrast, made it a little more darker but in the same time made a little more contrast so some of the colors pop a little bit and overall it looks like a pretty good scene as it, in, uh, as it is, everything kind of flows well, looks like one universal type of set. It's just all 3D and pictures and stuff so not that hard to do. So this was definitely an exciting video to make, especially with all the new 3D stuff that incorporated in. There's a lot of different 3D things like the Mushroom and the Goombas and all the other levels and everything. Very exciting to make, lots of special effects, good video overall. If you haven't seen it yet, definitely check it out. If you already have seen it, check it out again and then share it to your friends, family, your dog, whoever. So that ends this tutorial, but stay tuned. This Friday, there is going to be a big announcement for the channel. You definitely want to hear this. It is going to be pretty, I'll just say one thing, it's going to be pretty epic. All right, I'm Brian. Thanks for watching and keep being awesome, guys.